May 1st, 1994. That's Cedar! My goodness! What on earth happened there? I don't know. The legendary Murray Walker, an icon of the commentary scene, had no words to describe what he had just seen. The sunny San Marino Grand Prix was the third stage of the 1994 championship. Later, it would be called the Black Weekend, the most tragic moment in the world of racing. Michael Schumacher won the first two races of the season with Benetton. For Ayrton Senna, it was a time of bad luck. He has not yet scored a single point. We are here in this third round at the European season, starting now, starting from zero. So basically our championship starts here, 14 races, not 16. Qualifying proved to be challenging from the start. Senna felt pressured as he needed to set the best time in the qualifying session. All of a sudden, the rookie Rubens Barrichello went crashing at 225 kilometers per hour. He got into a very serious accident. It seemed that his career might be over. Barrichello lost consciousness. He was immediately provided with emergency treatment because he had swallowed his tongue. For Senna, it was a disaster. Rubens was his close friend. Ayrton supported him since childhood. He paid for the young driver's karting competitions. <laughs> Finally, Barrichello regained consciousness. No wonder the first person he saw was Senna. His injuries were minor, just a broken nose. After Ayrton made sure that Rubens was okay. He's all right, he's all right. He's shocked, of course, but he's all right. He returned to the track. Senna managed to show the best time. For him, it was more than a victory. You see, he won all his titles with the McLaren team. However, in 1994, Ayrton needed a more powerful car that would allow him to compete for the fourth title. So he joined Williams. They really had the best car. That is, until the FIA intervened. Oh yes, it's them again. So they decided that the cars should be less technologically advanced. For what reason do you think? To make the races more interesting to watch. Senna was very concerned about the changes. He said that the season would have a lot of accidents. Maybe he was onto something, but we'll talk about it later. During the second qualifying session, Roland Ratzenberger had only one goal in mind, to get ahead of his teammate. It was only his second race in Formula One. However, at a speed of 314 kilometers per hour, he lost control and crashed into a concrete wall. A little earlier, the Austrian driver had driven over a curb, damaging the front wing of the car. As a result, the wing came off in the Tamburello turning zone. As a result, the car was out of control. Everyone could see that Ratzenberger was immobile. The situation on the track became very tense. However, no one reported any information. Ayrton Senna was eager to find out all the details. He used a safety car to arrive at the scene of the accident. The race management was quick to criticize him. Senna responded decisively, at least someone cared about safety. You see, Roland died right on the spot. All medical attempts were in vain. But instead of announcing the tragedy right there, he was taken by helicopter to the hospital. The bottom line is, under Italian law, if a tragedy occurs during an event, it must be suspended until the circumstances are clarified. That is, if the race was cancelled, Formula One would lose millions of dollars. Just do the math. Sponsorship deals, TV broadcasts around the world, ticket sales, this is why the race management did not want Senna to know the truth. Ayrton was very distressed and in tears. At that moment, a legendary conversation took place that could change Senna's life. The head doctor of Formula One and a close friend asked him. He was the fastest man around. He won the championship so many times. Why don't we both quit and uh, we'll go fishing? He took a long time before he answered and then he turned to me and said, Sid, I have to go on. As you might have guessed, the decision was obvious, to continue the race. On the morning of May 1st, the day of the competition, the pilots had a briefing. It started with a minute of silence in memory of Ratzenberger. The atmosphere was tense, and all the pilots were actively discussing the increased security measures. Following it, Ayrton pushed for the reinstatement of the Drivers' Association. They agreed to take action before the next Grand Prix in Monaco. When the discussion of all the safety details was completed, the race time was approaching. Senna took the Austrian flag with him and took his place on the pole position. I always wondered what Ayrton felt like when he got behind the steering wheel of the car. It remained a mystery until I came across this video. So, 
The race started. When the light turned green, JJ Leto's Benetton suddenly stalled. And that's a Lotus. They'll have to stop the race, I'm sure, because there's debris on the circuit. Pedro Lamy did not notice the stop in time and crashed into the back of the car. The debris from the collision scattered all over the track. They also caused minor injuries to a police officer and eight spectators. The accident led to the emergence of the safety car. At that time, the leaders included Senna, Schumacher, Hill. Everyone who was on the track that day knew that this was a bad sign. Let me explain. It was only the second race in the history of Formula One when the safety car drove on a dry track. Senna immediately gestured for it to go faster. He could feel his tires losing temperature. On lap five, the safety car leaves the track. Ayrton and Schumacher started to compete with each other. They were driving almost closely together. Michael started to put a lot of pressure on Ayrton on lap six. Lap seven, 2.07 p.m. The Brazilian crashes into a wall at a tremendous speed of 307 kilometers per hour. Despite his attempts to brake sharply, the impact reduced his speed to only 211 kilometers per hour. When paramedics arrived, they recorded a low pulse. Aveva un sanguinamento importante per la lesione di vasi, era incosciente, però aveva un aveva il polso regolare. E però oh, le condizioni si vedevano che erano condizioni critiche. A fragment of the suspension pierced the helmet's visor. This caused a severe penetrating head injury. At the same time, it caused a tear in the tissue above his right eye, which led to significant blood loss. Besides, the force of the impact threw Senna's head to the opposite side, causing numerous skull fractures. At that time, I was particularly surprised to see another car at the scene of the accident. Well, I'm absolutely, I mean, I'm, I'm gobsmacked. I think that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen at any time in my life. Where the hell did it come from? But there's a catch. It was Eric Comas. Two years ago, it was Senna who saved his life during a race. He raced around the track, full of desire to thank him. Unfortunately, it was too late. Et surtout, il y a une paralysie qui s'est installée chez moi parce que je me retrouvais à côté de l'homme qui me deux ans avant m'avait sauvé la vie sans rien pouvoir faire et ça c'était terrible parce que lui il a Ayrton was hospitalized by helicopter to a hospital in Bologna. Formula 1 management was informed of Senna's serious condition, but no one told anything to the other drivers. While the drops of blood from the helicopter terrified the journalists. The race in Imola continued, so two fatalities did not stop the FIA. On lap 41, another terrible incident occurred. On the way out of the pits, Minardi's car lost a poorly secured rear wheel. As a result, several people in the pit lane were injured by the debris. Schumacher held the lead throughout the race. Thanks to the tactics of three pit stops, Michael won the race. Finally, the damn race was over. No champagne at the award ceremony. As soon as the award was announced, official news about Ayrton Senna's condition spread around the world. Devo solo dire che gli accertamenti elettroencefalografici che abbiamo terminato 5 minuti fa purtroppo confermano quella che era stata la diagnosi clinica di morte cerebrale. Ma non resta più alcuna speranza. No, purtroppo nessuna speranza. Ayrton was a devout Catholic. The Bible says that the number 7 symbolizes completion. And on the seventh lap of this race, Ayrton Senna's journey ended. <laughs> The incident shocked the entire racing world. The remains of the Williams and Simtek cars were already under the protection of the Italian police for investigation. An Austrian flag was found in Senna's cockpit, which he planned to show at the finish line in memory of Ratzenberger. After Senna's death, Brazil was engulfed in a wave of grief and sorrow. The Brazilian government declared three days of national mourning in honor of Senna. Ayrton Senna, three times world motor racing champion, has died. Why go on? 
because I need it. Yes, Ayrton Senna achieves his ambition to win the Brazilian Grand Prix. It was a kind of uh, choice of life. The race organizers delayed the announcement of the events with both Ratzenberger and Senna for financial purposes. It was only the start of the season. The rest of the season unfolded amidst a gloomy vibe. Click on the video to watch the most dramatic season in the history of Formula One.